Guys, hey, thanks for joining me today. So I'm fighting off a cold and some deer flies here, so bear with me. Fungicide, should we be doing it a tassel, brown silk, pre-tassel, a couple times, what product, what rate should we be using? Don't care, I have no care in the world to learn how to properly use a fungicide. I Luckily, I haven't used a fungicide in, in a lot of years. I've been trying to actually fix a problem so I don't have to be dependent upon the fungicide. Let's look at in our short lifetime, in the, our short lifetime, just the last 20 years, what has happened to fungicide use and fungal pathogens that have come along. We've, rust has been around since the 40s, 50s, 60s, whatever. It's, it's old and not one person in, in modern agronomy or at universities has came out and said, hey, here's how you cure so you don't ever have to use a fungal pathogen. It will never happen. The system is designed. We're, we're living proof of a failed experiment of industrialized agriculture. It's all around us. The fact that we need as much tillage, fertilizer, herbicide, fungicide, insecticide that we do is living proof that we are very dysfunctioning soil and plants, even though we're growing great yields. So where, where are we going to go with this? If we went from, meh, let's use a fungicide once in a while as needed, now in 2026, that pendulum is really swinging. In 2026, retail agronomists saying, you know, for sure plan on two, but be prepared for three passes in corn uh, just in case some diseases blow up. So if we're getting ready for two to three passes to be the normal, at what point, then what? At what point do we start to see some resistance to this? Uh, is four passes a tipping point for farmers? At what point do we say, hold on now, there's something wrong with this system? And, and so if you actually get Google, get your Google and chat machine and you start looking research about resistance to fungicide and the prediction that we're going to be in this spot from years ago from universities and stuff, they predicted this happening because we've been down this road before with other things. We're, we're just repeating these same cycles over and over again. So how can we possibly be doing a bad job? How can we not have healthy plants? We're growing more yield than our fathers could ever imagine. We're doing more fertilizer than they could ever imagine. The tillage and the planter to create a seed bed, to singulate that seed, to tuck it in better, the technology on the planter, nobody before us has ever had that advancement that we've had. The genes and the traits in the plants, the fertilizer management, the infurrow, zero by two, two by two, split applied, wide drop, drone feeding, foliar feeding, top dressing, stimulants, all this stuff. No generation has had the products that we've had and it reflects to our yield, but it does not reflect to our plant health. And how can that be? Again, get to your chat bot or your Google machine and start researching modern agronomy, bulk fertilizer, lots of fertilizer applied in correlation to plant health. You cannot find any research with a direct correlation between I applied X fertilizer to get an X yield response. There is zero correlation there. But you can find dozens of, uh, actually some university papers, some soil agronomy, soil scientist reports from independent studies that show that our bulk fertilizer in the fall and in the spring ahead of the planter along with all the asides that we put down and the tillage that we are doing is creating a weak plant. It grows good, it's, it's fantastic looking, but internally it has a very suppressed immune system. Some of that is from the GMO breeding, but a lot of it is the system that we're farming, the failed experiment that we are living in called industrialized ag. <clears throat> I know that upsets a lot of people, but we are factory farming and the factory is kind of broken in a way. Our widgets that we're selling have zero to do with quality, it's just quantity and that's it. Um, so there is a tremendous amount of data saying that the system that we're following is building us an unhealthy plant and dysfunctional soil, keeping us reliant upon the system. I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but the facts are right in front of your face. 
<clears throat> so how do we move away from this? Well, if all the research and science say that all the bulk fertilizer and the asides and the tillage create an environment for this big yield, weak plant that is very reliant upon inputs, I would do the opposite. Very much reduced tillage, very much reduced bulk fertilizer. Go to more of a nutrient management program. And again, go back to your Googleator and your chat thing and look for the universe or the the independent research, agronomy journals, university journals even, that show that nutrient management uh, reduces dependency upon the fungicides and insecticides. <clears throat> I'm living my own little anecdotal evidence. For a lot of years, I, I used to be the guy that was always, like the old timers, like, what? You're not broad acre fungicide? Like, what are you doing, Bob? You need to get out there and fungicide every acre to protect your investment. How can you not be doing this? To now it's the other way, like, hey, I've gone 10 years without a fungicide. I hope to make it another five or 10. I might get caught someday. Someday there might be a disease that blows up that can overpower my plants. And then we'll deal with it when that happens. But I can at least say that, you know what? I had to use fungicide once in 10 years and maybe another 10 before I have to use it again. Who knows how that's gonna pan out. But we've reduced tillage. We've eliminated MAP and DAP fertilizer. So all the chloride and salt right there is gone. You just do a little phosphorus, acetate, AMF products. We release phosphorus from the soil. We're mimicking nature to grow a healthy plant. Uh, the big one, and then again, we've really greatly reduced the nitrogen and the potassium chloride. I only use a splash of potassium chloride that I used to do. Again, all that chloride, all that salt out of the soil. We want balanced nutrition. We're always balancing our soil tests but we throw all this fertilizer out there, we completely throw that soil and that plant way out of whack. It's imbalanced. There's no micro um, symbiosis going on there. It's synergy. Uh, and so we're, I'm trying to farm in a manner that encourages that. And our tests are showing it. Uh, our, our conventional till ground that we use as a test, you know, is that half to one fungal to bacteria ratio. It's very low count. That is soil that is very reliant upon all these inputs. Um, our soils are, you know, testing 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, almost one to one with a very high life count in that soil. That means that we're really cycling a lot of nutrients. We're building health. The plant and the soil are starting to work together. And it also shows on the weed side. Now, a lot of other no-tillers that aren't soil health based commented this spring as to how can your fields have no dandelions this spring, no pennycrest. My fields were very clean. For a no-till guy that really doesn't use much herbicide, my fields were 100% impressively clean compared to a lot of the other no-tillers that use more herbicide because we focused on gypsum and, and trying to get the soil functioning and things like that. And so the other thing we do is you'll hear people talk about, well, I use fungicide, not because of the fungicide killing side of it, because it's a stress reliever. Well, then buy a stress reliever that doesn't carry death with it. We use phosphite acid. Phosphite acid is systemic for 30 to 60 days. It stimulates the defense system. It stimulates root growth. It stimulates nutrient uptake and that helps build us a stronger plant. There's many tools out there. Uh, and then there's also many, uh, John Kempf is a big speaker on nutrient management can cure your fungal weed and pest disease issues. Get Googling, get reading, solve the problems on your farm. Stop relying on this. And I know you guys are gonna say, you don't know my area. We did fungicide last year because we had tar spot and it made us 50 bushel. If I ever apply a fungicide and it makes me 50 bushel, I can guarantee you the second year I am not applying fungicide, I will be getting plant tests, soil tests, digging in that soil with a shovel. I will be reaching out to scientists all over the place to solve that problem before I go to the retailer and be like, hey, thanks, you know. The fungicide you sold me last year made me $50 an acre, so sell me twice as much this year. 
Like, like, no, no, that is not how that is supposed to work. That should be a big red flag for you. All right, that's it. I'm done. I'm out. End of story. <laughs> I'm losing my voice. Let me know what your thoughts are.